So bite indication in carp fishing can quite often be overlooked. And in certain situations, it is really important. Winter is truly sort of setting in now. And this time of year, you know, the carp are gonna be moving around a lot slower, feeding a lot less. And I think this time of year, it is, you know, it's important to actually pay attention to, to what's going on out there. And any indication you can get on your alarms this time of year is a bonus. So one of the most important things with bite indication is always point your rods at the spot you're fishing. Um, so if your rods, you know, at an angle to where your spot is, you've got that bend in the rod, the fish can't take the line as easy. There's just way more resistance there than if the rod's pointing straight at it. So yeah, when you can, always have your rods straight at the spot. So I'm currently down at St. John's on the Linear Fisheries Complex, um, and I'm in sort of the bowl end, they call it. So it's the deeper end. Um, it's where a lot of the fish, you know, it's got good winter form. A lot of the fish sort of hold in this end. I haven't had anything yet, but I've only been here a few hours. Um, and yeah, I'm fishing sort of 108 yards. So a fair distance out, um, and I've got, semi-tight line really so i've got a nice drop in the bobbin so this allows you know if the fish moves away from me which they normally do um i've got enough room there for the, the bobbin to to move up but then also if the fish does come towards me the bobbin's going to fall down and i get a drop back indication polar opposites that would be if you're margin fishing so quite often you're just under your feet or to your right under a little tree um, and in that situation you, you know you'd have the bobbin on the floor nice slack line but the fish can only move away from you so you're not worrying about drop backs um, you're more worried about your line lay at that point there's always a payoff between your line lay and bite indication. If you want to conceal that line away um, and have a, a nice line lay, you know, you're, you're trying to be stealthy as possible, you're always going to sacrifice bite indication in that situation. But the position I'm in now, you know, I'm fishing far out. The fish are out there in the middle anyway. Um, they're not going to be coming across my lines too much. They're, they're going to be, hopefully, you know, coming onto the bait, which is in front of my rigs. So you're not worried as much about your line lay. The last thing I would want at fishing over 100 yards is a slack line, all, you know, with your line line all the way across the bottom. That fish could literally move 20, 30, 40 yards without a single beep on your alarm. Um, it's the last thing you want, especially in the winter. As said, you know, they're moving really slow. Literally a few bleeps, pull out the clip is, you know, is, is a run this time of year. So yeah, I always fish a sort of a semi, semi tight or a tight line in the winter. A similar situation to this would be when you're zig fishing, um, even more so because you'd be fishing a bowstring tight line at that point. Um, and even with a big bobbin like that, I'd still probably add weights there just so you've got that little bit of a drop. Um, and quite often you're only going to get a couple of beeps and that's, you know, that's a take with a zig. Um, there's a lot of play there, big long hook lengths. So yeah, the fish, they can move around and not get a lot this end. So anything you can do to put that in your favor. And also with your alarms, but these ones in particular, the C-Series model, and um, they've got sensitivity adjustment. So with zig fishing, I definitely have that, you know, maxed out. So the highest sensitivity you can. So literally the, the tiniest movement there, you're going to get a beep on the alarm. And yeah, especially this time of year, like I say, they're going to be moving a lot slower than they would um, in the summer months. So yeah, any movement is always good to know about. The opposite to that is when I would turn the sensitivity down, it's pretty much just if, you know, if you've got a, a big old wind coming across the water, um, this is quite an open pit. So if the wind was to pick up, it's nice and still today. I would turn that sensitivity down. So then if the bobbin is moving ever so slightly in the wind, it's not going to be giving me any false indications. The swing arms I'm using at the moment will also help massively with that. So if you've got a bobbin with the standard chain, um, if, the, if the wind's coming across, it swings the bobbin. And yeah, again, gives you sort of false bites. So with strong winds, yeah, definitely use a heavy bobbin with the swing arm. Just eliminates all false indications that way. Another scenario where you want to know about every bit of movement out there. So your indication is, you know, in top form would be snag fishing. So up to an island or a far margin, anything like that. Again, you want pretty much a tight line. I always have a bit of a drop. Um, as I said before, like now when I'm distance fishing, you know, just so you've got movement up or down. Um, so if, if this was right now, if I was fishing up to an island, um, as soon as that bobbin goes up to the top, I'd be probably hitting that for a, for a take, you know. Um, you don't, the last thing you want is them to be running off and getting into whatever snag you're fishing to. So um, at that point, yeah, high sensitivity. Um, again, a good weight in the bobbin. Um, tight on the clutch as well. You don't want to be taking any line. Um, so that's where line clips come in really nice because if it pulls out that line clip, you know you've got a take. So with these alarms, you can change the tone as well. So there's, there's six different tone settings. Um, and again, with snag fishing, it's quite common that only one rod is fishing to a snag or an island and the others are in open water. Whatever scenario you've got, I would turn the snag rod or margin rod to a lower tone. And then I know any indication I get on that straight away, I need to be on that rod as quick as I can. Whereas an open water rod, I'd probably have on a higher tone. And then I know, you know, I don't have to be as quick on it um, getting out of the bivvy. The other time I change my tones on my alarms is doing like sort of social or double up in one swim. And um, what I'll do is if, 
if the person I'm fishing with is fishing with a high tone, then I'll do the opposite. That way you're not jumping out of bed for your mate's rods. You know it's your rods that are going. Like I say, all this quite often isn't really thought about, and I think it does warrant a little bit of thinking, especially in the colder months. But, you know, not just using the same tactic every time you go. And that, you know, it is very scenario based. It depends where you're fishing, how you're fishing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's food for thought. So I hope some of the, the tips that I've given, you know, help you think about that. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments, you know, how you fish or your, your preferred method and what your opinion is on bite indication, really. Um, it's always interesting to know other people's opinions. Thanks for watching.